Are there any fears that he needs you to know about? Or is there anything going on with him that he thinks you should know about? She goes, you don't have to say it out loud, but just ask him. And before I can even get these questions out in my head, I start having a panic attack. Hello, my little bear cubs, and welcome back to another episode of Secondhand Therapy. Need to remind you real quickly, we're not therapists, we're not experts. You know, we're just two uh, dudes trying to figure it out. Trying to figure it out. (laughs) (laughs) What a a rough week, dude. Uh, We're struggling out here, man. (laughs) buddy. It's going to be a good one. So uh, thanks for being here. a thought the other day uh, that was like how long can we do this podcast you know what i mean like yeah uh, you know it is very personal we are doing this every Uh week and if the goal is to get better then uh, you would think that we'll eventually get better and then uh, not worried about it uh, yeah then i had a dream that just (laughs) fucked me up (laughs) and i was like oh yeah getting better sounds like a uh real far-fetched idea at this point yeah so i think we'll be doing this well into our 70s yeah i think (laughs) (laughs) yeah i think getting better is reserved for like people that get sober yeah i don't think you can get sobriety from depression (laughs) no yeah no a little tolerance break every now and again but uh yeah (sighs) yeah Buddy, I had a dream that just fucked me up. Turned me, turned me upside down. Do you feel like sharing with the sleuth? Oh, yeah. Let's talk about the dream, shall All we? All right. Let's hear it. I want to hear it. Okay. Where, where do you... Okay. So, <laughs> uh, in the dream, I'm sleeping in the dream. That's how tired I am in real life is okay. my dream life is taking a nap. All right. And this dream, is this a nap dream or an overnight dream? This is a nap dream. This is a day daytime nap dream. Okay. Uh, so you're asleep, and in the dream, you're asleep. Yeah. All right. So Inception. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Already off the bat, fucks with you. Fucks yeah. with your reality. Real weird thing. I got no top to spin. You know what yeah. I mean? I can't tell. Yeah. Um, and I keep uh, hearing stuff in the dream uh like somebody like in my apartment or something happening but i'm trying to like sleep through it because i'm that tired in the dream i'm like i'm not getting up for that fuck that yeah uh and then eventually i'm like god damn it, let's see what's going on out here all right and i get up and i'm in a space that's very similar looking to the space where i live now okay so not it, identical not identical I'm in the kitchen that looks that everything is the same, only it's like rotated. Okay. So all everything matches. It's just kind of askew. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's kind of odd, but I also think that I'm awake now because okay. I wake up in the dream. I'm not sleeping in the dream anymore. So I'm yeah. like, oh, I'm awake in real life. Yeah. And I'm in my kitchen, even though it looks kind of weird, but it has to be my kitchen because I'm awake now. Right. And uh, there's like cords strung out everywhere and there's this old school laptop that's open and it's on my kitchen counter and it's attached to like this console TV, like the miniature ones that you see sometimes on like those home cooking shows from the 80s. Oh, where, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, a little corner kitchen TV. Yeah. Yeah. It has one of those with a, with a uh, VCR in it. Oh, nice. And in the VHS, like also side note, I'd like to find one of these. Great. You know? Yeah. Be great. So in there, uh, there's a VHS tape playing, and it's of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles cartoons. You And you love some Teenage oh, Mutant Ninja Turtles. buddy, I'm a turtle fanatic. <clears throat> yeah, you are. You know? Who's your favorite turtle growing up? A lot of people think it's Michelangelo. Yeah. It's Raphael. He's the red one. Yeah. Yeah. He's a sarcastic motherfucker. Yeah. You know? Nice. Um. So... uh. One of my favorite shows growing up, mm-hmm. love the you know love the turtles. So it's playing, but the the TV VCR combo is hooked up to the laptop, and it's like making a digital copy, like you do uh, for like old home movies and shit like that. Yeah, um, 
And so it's doing that. And I'm like, what the fuck? And like, again, there's a chords everywhere. And I'm like, who the fuck set all this up? And I'm like, mom must have been in here like setting this up. Mm. And I'm annoyed. And then there's a note uh, written out on the, on the laptop. And it's on the same paper that my mother would write notes on back in Ohio at her house. Oh, she had like a go-to stationary yeah, type just, thing? Yeah, just okay. looked like one of her like little notepads. Yeah. And I'm like, fucking mom. And I'm looking and it's in her cursive handwriting and everything. And it's just like a generic note. It's not like, I love you always or anything. It's not yeah. like, it didn't fuck me up like that. Do you remember uh, what it said? It was just like, uh, left this out for you or something like that. It was, okay. Again, like something generic. Like yeah. That. But I could tell it was her handwriting. So I'm like, okay, mom set all this up and she got this going. I'm like, what the fuck's going on? So I reach in my pocket and dream and I get out my phone and I'm like, I got to call mom and see what the deal is. Mm. And then I'm like, what is mom's phone number? Mm. And then I can't think of it. And then I start thinking like, oh, well, do I want to call her at home or do I want to call her cell phone? I'm like, where would she be right now? And in the dream, I can't figure out how to locate her like i don't even know her schedule that kind of thing yeah so i'm like how long has it been since i talked to my fucking ma <laughs> you know <laughs> like i gotta call her like this is how long has it been and then i come to the realization in the dream that mom's dead mm. and it is like hearing it for the first time yeah in this dream reality it just cripples me, man. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I am full on, I mean, crying so hard in the dream that I'm like hyperventilating, like having like that kind of panic cry. Yeah. I'm hunched over the sink and I'm, I can't catch my breath and I'm just sobbing. And, uh, and I realized kind of at that moment, like, Hey man, you're dreaming. You got, you got to get out of here. Oh, Okay. Yeah. Are you able to wake yourself up in those situations? I never can. Well, that was the thing. So I kept trying to, and I would like, I remember coming to a, like two or three times, opening my eyes in real life mm -hmm. and being like, hey man, you got to get up. And then I would just like go back into it. Like sleep paralysis. Yeah. And I like, yeah. couldn't get out of it. And then eventually like I woke up like something out of a horror movie, you sit straight up like, <gasps> you <Yeah>. know? <laughs> And I was like, what the fuck, dude? You're okay. That was a dream. You're fine. And then I have to remind myself. Were you fine? Well, here's the thing. I was like, but also, mom is dead. Yeah. And then it was like finding it out all over again, back to back. It was a two-puncher. Yeah. <laughs> it was a two-punch combo. I was like, fucked up, fucked me up in the dream, and then woke me up and fucked me up in reality. And I was like, okay, yeah, I get it. Yeah. Mom's dead. Okay. Yeah. And I'm like trying to process that and I'm trying to figure out if this is reality or not. And that kind of, I describe it as like, a, cause I remember I called you, I describe it as like, uh, when you're traveling all day and you go to check into a hotel and then you fall asleep in that weird hour, like right as the sun's going down. Yeah. And then you <clears throat> wake up at like 7 p.m. and the sun is down and you're like, oh my God, it's 7 a.m. I slept all day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're in a hotel and you're like, where the fuck am I? What? And you're like, no, hey man, you drove to San Diego. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you took a yeah. nap. It's 7 p.m. You're fine. <laughs> it was like that kind of like, where am I? What's going on? What's real? Yeah. And, uh, and it was my fault because I, I slept too long. You mean it's my fault? What the fuck is I slept that? Too, I slept too long. Yeah, you deserved it. Yeah. You're right. <laughs> Fucking idiot. <laughs> so I, I, I slept too long. You can't sleep too long during the day. Yeah. And uh, and so I walk in and I have a you know, I have a picture of mom and grandma there in the kitchen. And uh, I walked in the kitchen afterwards and told mom and I looked at mom's picture and I go, I'm mad at you. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. said, I listen, I know I was oversleeping, but you didn't have to wake me up like that. Yeah. That's <laughs> fucked up. Yeah. We don't do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So yeah, that was a that was a fun one for therapy to uh, talk about this week and unpack. Uh, in the spirit of what we talked about last week, yeah. Did you notice you were laughing through that whole dream while you told it to us? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, what's that about? Why are you laughing? What's funny about that? It's hilarious. Isn't trauma funny? 
Yeah. It's, uh. I talked about that in therapy about how you and I are just constantly calling each other out now. Yeah. Why are you smiling? <laughs> What's funny about that? And we're just constantly just <sighs> using humor to get through fucking everything. Yeah. So what'd your therapist have to say about that dream? Well, one of the things she unpacked, uh, which was, I thought was interesting was, um, how my body is signaling me, um, and trying to tell me that I need to take a little bit of a break Mm -hmm. because I'm so exhausted that I'm sleeping while I'm sleeping. Yeah. She's like, that's number one. Yeah. She's like, whatever you're doing, you're, you're burning out. You need, your body is trying to tell you something. Yeah. Um, so I need to get a little bit better rest. I've just been, I, I was thinking that the trigger was the way I've been isolated the past couple of weeks. I've been mm. working on a big project and I have not really been going out. I haven't, I didn't do anything for Halloween. I didn't Well, you're 40, but yeah, <sighs> come on, man. Would you go trick or treating? What do you want to do? Halloween's the best. For you, if you're a child, sure, yeah. Huh? No, Halloween's for adults. It's not for kids. Uh, well, Christmas is for kids. It's for kids and sluts. That's what Halloween's for. <laughs> and we know well, that. And we know that. I'm a little of both. So it's my Damn, favorite you holiday. Are. <laughs> Shit. Yeah. Fuck. You lost out on Halloween. I'm sorry, dude. Yeah. yeah. Um. So yeah, I didn't really do anything for Halloween. I really haven't been. I've just been kind of isolated. I haven't yep. been taking a lot of phone calls. I've been hanging out. It is, you know. Um, and when I get like that, it makes me feel even more alone, of course, because yeah. I'm isolated. And um, we started talking about when those triggers happen, if there's like, um, if I recognize any patterns. Mm. Um And I brought up that, yeah, you know, of course, like certain holidays will bring that out of me. Christmas is a big one for me for grief. And um, New Year's is a weird one for me because mom and grandma would stay up and call me every New Year's and stuff like that. Um, And we brought up or we we talked about uh, making time for grief. She asked me if I if I uh, ever make time to just process or grieve or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And. I haven't in a long time. I realize I haven't done that. Um, The last time was on my birthday. Uh, I do that on my birthday. I listen to voicemails from my mother so I can hear her voice. Yeah. Um, Torture. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Just (laughs) absolute torture. Trauma ASMR. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Jesus Christ. Um, But there's, you know, there's a, a voicemail of my grandmother singing me happy birthday. I listen to that every year, you know, stuff like that. Um... But I used to make, I call them dates with my depression. Nice. Um, I used to do that more often, and I realized that it's been a while for me. Mm. And I think maybe that's kind of catching up to where I am feeling more isolated. It's been a while since I've actually like made time to think about them or process any of that. Because um, that was a big thing that I brought up to her. I was like, it's been so long. How does this feel so fresh? Yeah. Um, and yeah, as we all know, like it, grief doesn't go away. Never. Um, but it's just so, it was, it, I just felt a little shocked that it, that it cut so deep. Yeah. I mean, I was fucking gutted. Yeah. Yeah. That's a rough one. And, uh, yeah, to have it be this long. And that's what I was wondering if I had like not processed this enough. And of course, she was asking all the questions about like, you know, like, well, do you feel like you've processed it? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, well, you know, I wrote two specials and a book about it. And she's like, uh-huh, but did you process it? Yeah. I'm like, not really. Yeah. <laughs> I talked about it in front of a lot of people. Yeah. Is that counts? Isn't that processing? <laughs> yeah. I'm doing it on a podcast right now. Yeah. Process it. Yeah. Uh, turns out, no. That's not what processing is. Yeah. Wow, that's a shocking, yeah. shocking revelation there. <laughs> she also asked me too, where like, when I was talking about these mm, dates with depression and mm. grief process and all these things and the phone calls and listening to the voicemails and all that. Yeah. Um, there was a moment there where I, where I stopped and she goes, uh, 
there's like this brief pause and I go, why, why you mean mugging me? Yeah. And she goes, because you keep, you keep stopping. And I'm wondering if it's because you don't want to show true emotion or not. And I go, well, I got no problem showing emotions. Oh, so I love when you lie to your therapist. Go ahead. I'm doing it right now. That's not showing emotion. Speaking isn't showing emotion. I guess I'm. Wait a minute. Uh huh. What? Hold on now. I'm. I'm. Dude, I'm. Let me firmly <laughs> planted on hold here. What's let up? Me, let me process this for a minute. What's up, babe? But if I'm if I am speaking about something sad and I get sad, uh-huh. that's me showing emotion, right? If you're feeling sad? Yeah. Well, feeling something and showing something aren't the same, right? Well, how are you supposed to show emotion? Oh, you cry. (laughs) Oh, you get up and you break something. You show anger. You show sadness. You You fully have to cry? You emote. Showing emotion is outward. I don't think you have a problem feeling emotions. Yeah. But you definitely don't want nobody to know what you're feeling. Oh, okay. right? and we know that. God damn it! And we know that. We do know that. We know oh, that. Fuck. Yeah. Well, I go. <laughs> this is what I said. I said, "Are you accusing me of purposely?" Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the way it's always an attack. It's always an attack with you. Said, you Poke your chest again. Are you accusing yeah. me? Me. Are you accusing me of emotionally edging with you right now? Yeah, that's a great line. And she, and she's laughing and she's like, well, I'm just curious that you're stopping yourself. And I'm like, no, oh, I just have nothing else to share. Mm-hmm. And I really didn't at that time. Yeah. And then later on, about like 10 or 15 minutes into the session, I'm crying like a little fucking baby. And, you yeah. know, like, is this hey, enough for you? <laughs> hey, yeah, you're not crying like a baby. You're crying like a person showing emotion. And that's not a negative thing, man. That's what babies do. That's what baby, little babies do. Yeah, well, dude, the only time you, you cry when you get hungry, that's babyish. I do. That's babyish. I do show emotion when it's I'm baby-esque. hungry. Babyesque. It's babyesque. <laughs> but crying because yeah. you're sad, that's okay. No, yeah. there's no, you should, no shame. There's no shame there. That's okay. Good for you. I I have. I have problem I have problem showing emotion because I'm over here. I, <laughs> because of the way that I was raised with uh mom and grandma. Mm. It was you, you you get over it and you keep it moving. Being raised by uh strong women is an incredible Again, I don't like using this word. It's an incredible blessing. Mm. It's tough sometimes, though. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 You and I share that. Yeah, because in those where they get their strength from mm-hmm. is because they're not allowed to show strength because they're women in different parts of society where they have to kind of compete or they're not allowed to show strength. No, that that's why they show strength. Because they're not allowed to show weakness. Right. Okay, I understand. And then that rubs off on you in kind of the mm-hmm. same ways that the alpha mentality does with men, where it's like oh, you have yeah. to be strong. Mm-hmm. But I think it's worse with women because they have, they have more to prove. Always. Yeah. Always at a disadvantage. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, man, you're gonna cry right now? Oh, mm-hmm. Absolutely not. Yeah. Keep it moving. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, bro. You're with a single Italian mom. Are you kidding me? Yeah. No, yeah. no, 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 no. <laughs> we got shit to do. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's a beautiful thing, but it's it's tough. It teaches them real bad habits. Yeah. For sure. Habits that are, ba- are hard to break like that. You know, again, I'm 40 and I'm still feeling like, oh, I'm not going to cry right now. What are you crazy? I'm not going to let you see me yeah. cry. Oh, dude, crying in front of people is... Mm-mm. Oh boy. Mm. Who have you cried in front of? Oh man. I feel like it always backfires. <laughs> okay. I feel like sometimes you're like, I'm gonna let this person in and then they're mm-hmm. like, well, this fucking guy. And you're like, okay. 
Have I ever done that to you when you cried? No. You don't show any emotion when I cry. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> you go like this. You done now? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> You're very- this is this is why the strangers on the internet think I'm such a dick, and I'm <laughs> they think I beat the fuck out of you as soon as we're done recording. Oh, this is definitely an abusive relationship, but oh, uh, he cries all the time. <laughs> this guy won't stop crying. We're just gonna keep laughing through it. Oh God, I feel like I I try to be comforting when you show emotion with me. Yes, thank yes. you. All right, I want to make because if I if I'm not, I need to know that because that is my intention. No, no, very much. Okay, well, that's good. Yeah. That, that's good. Um, Have I ever cried in front of you? Once or twice. It's been a while. Yeah? Yeah. Was it like a full cry or was it just, was I just dribbling? Just leaking? Just dribbling, yeah. I haven't full cried in front of you. Uh-uh. Oh. <laughs> I can't wait. That feels impossible to me. Yeah? Oh, buddy. Really? Yeah, that feels. Oh man, I I feel like uh, you yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah. yeah. Nah. you want to cry right now? No. <laughs> Said no. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't wanna. I was gonna say I legitimately think I could get shot in front of you. I'd be like, hey man, what are we doing about this? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. I just, oh man, I I fucking struggle crying in front of people. I really do. Hmm. What? Is it just the uh, strong yeah, mom thing? I guess. Yeah. yeah. Um. I mean, yeah, right after... I always want to say her name on here, and I don't know if I should say her name, and then... Yeah. It's a weird thing, because it's just... The internet's weird, and I don't need people trying to... Yeah. Dig up her shit and whatever. Um, but yeah, after she passed away... I did a lot of crying and uh, it was always uncomfortable when, cause you know, when it's that fresh, like it's, it's completely uncontrollable. You yeah. know, you just, you'll be sitting there taking a sip of water and then you're hyperventilating, just bawling your eyes out. Um, but yeah, whenever that would happen in front of people, it was so fucking uncomfortable. Nobody made me feel dumb about it. Like, nobody was shitty about it. It's just, it was so foreign to me. Yeah, the the weird ones for me are, (laughs) I've cried in public. Mm -hmm. Done Uh, that. Yeah, where I was at a Kohl's in Texas. Oh, God, pick a worse place, dude. I know, right? The only worse place is a gun store in Texas. (laughs) Two back-to-back, Kohl's and in Texas? What are we doing? (laughs) And, uh... You know, Kohl's was always where my mom would would go. Yeah, and because uh, we we got one in Marion, and it was a big deal. Yeah, oh, and, uh, yeah, come yeah, on. yeah. Did you guys have Mervins? No, uh, we had a Meyer. A Meyer? Yeah, I don't even know what that is. It's a grocery store, <laughs> it's like a Walmart. All right. Um. So my mother loved Kohl's, and whenever yeah. I would come to down town when I was older, she would always be like, "Let's go to Kohl's and get you something." And I'm like, "There's nothing at Kohl's for me. Yeah, get you some nice slacks." <laughs> yeah, I'd be like, this is "Some cologne or something." Yeah, but it made her feel good. And yeah, so we yeah. would go there, and uh, I haven't been to one in a, in, in a long time. And I was uh, in Texas a few years ago, and uh, with my buddy, and he had re- returned something or whatever. It's like yeah. around the holidays. And so we went into this Coles, and it was the first time in a long time I'd been in one. And uh, I just remember being in the men's section, and this song came on. It was like a sad, like, holiday song. Yeah. And I'm at a Coles. Yeah. And my buddy's upstairs, like, returning something, and I'm just alone in this aisle, and I yeah. just start bawling. I'm like, oh, this is cool. This is a really cool uh, yeah. <laughs> side effect of grief that I've unlocked. <laughs> yep. Neat. I remember that uh, happened to me at a Dillard's outlet. <laughs> <laughs> There's a Dillard's outlet in uh, in Phoenix, and my mom and my sister love to go up from Tucson, go to the Dillard's outlet and find like mm-hmm. they always give me like she always give me some like nice polos and they're like four dollars. I'm like all right, and this is at a time where. You know, they were like, I couldn't be left alone. <laughs> they, right. were, they were like, I oh, don't know, we're going to find him hanging from a beam somewhere. So, like, they just brought me everywhere. 
So we went to the Dillard's outlet and I'm just sitting there fucking miserable. Like I'm like, I feel like I have to be babysat and you know what I mean? Just mm-hmm. like, <clears throat> you know, it sucks. Yeah. And it's fucking David Bowie song comes on and that shit like David Bowie was her favorite. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, <clears throat> I gotta go outside. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta go to the car. Now. I gotta go outside. I started fucking bawling my fucking eyes out. Mom, Dude, car keys. Yeah. Now, now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, fuck. Yeah, I don't miss that shit, man. Yeah, the, uh, the um, uh, I'll Be Home for Christmas. <sighs> Cannot listen to that song to this day. Yeah. Not for me, dog. Yeah. Mm-mm-mm. Yeah. Triggers. They be triggering. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So this dream fucked me up. I'm bringing it back around. Yeah, that's a rough one, dude. And uh, it was the first time in a long time that I had felt like I didn't want to be here anymore. Yeah. It was that feeling of like, oh, we're done here, right? Yeah. You don't need me. I'm good. I can go ahead and take off. <laughs> yeah. It, uh, I have not felt that way in, in a long time and, uh, could not shake that feeling for a while. Yeah. And I forced myself to take a walk and it's fucking near impossible to do, man. Good for you. Uh, I'm proud yeah. of you for that. That's hard. Well, I just knew that if I didn't, then, I'm done for the week. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you sink into it. I sink into it so easily. You start borrowing from tomorrow and the day over oh. and the day after just to like make it through the next. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> and, um, we were talking about that a little bit in therapy about that feeling and what it is. And, how isolating that can be. And part of that for me is that I don't feel like I struggle with feeling alone and like left behind. Yeah. Death will do that. Yeah. And when you lose a lot of people like I have, Mm -hmm. everybody's dead. Um, everybody's not dead. Everybody's dead. Everybody's <laughs> not dead. Uh, I don't, it's not a relatable thing. And for a lot of people, it's not. Right. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. And in my circles and this and that, and even when I, a lot of times, you know, I've gotten really good at masking and you know, being able to pretend that everything's okay when it's not. Mm-hmm. And so even when people call to check on me or whatever, it's like, yeah, I'm great. What's going on, man? I, I'm just, yeah, I got to go. I'm working on this thing or whatever. And I'm real good at that. And then I just isolate or, you know. Um, and we talked about why I do that or why I don't feel like it's okay to share when I'm not doing well. Mm -hmm. And it all comes down to, I think this is a common thing, feeling like a burden. Mm. And I feel like that's so generic and a lot of people say that and such a common thing about like, I don't want to be a burden. And, but again, it's, I'm hurting in a way that I don't think is relatable to a lot of people in my circles. Yeah. And even so, and again, like being, it's been a while since my mom died and Wayne died and grandma and like all these things. And I don't, I don't want to be that phone call where somebody goes, this fucking guy, like he's still sad. Yeah. Yeah, man. I'm still sad. Yeah. And I, I told you this. I like to operate on a level where it's like, I'm not okay, but I'm great. Yeah. Like I'm not ever going to be okay. 
I'm not okay. I'm fucked up. I'm real sad. It hurts. It hurts real bad. Yeah. But I'm down to hang. You want to hang? Let's have a good time. <laughs> but I'm down to hang. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? Like, we don't have to talk about it. I'm going to be a, I'm gonna be a super cool laid back dude. <laughs> super chill. <laughs> you know I mean? Super chill. Super chill. Like, I'm a good hang. Yeah. But I'm not, I'm not okay. Like, you're out of your fucking mind. Yeah. Um, and a lot of times that feeling of being a burden is the things I was bitching about in therapy was just people being a good friend to me. Yeah. I'm like, oh, they're calling a check on me and they're doing that. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. Asshole. That's <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> These people care about you. They're asking about you. They're trying to get involved. They're trying to see what they can do. And I'm on the other end being like, just fucking leave me alone. Yeah. But also, come over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I I described it to my therapist where I'm like, <clears throat> again, also being open about um suicidal thoughts in the past and, and being very vulnerable with my feelings and all these things, it does, it does create a little bit of a label or a, an alarm system on me or my friendship or yeah. whatever connection I have to you. Yeah. I hate that. Yeah. I don't want to be that guy who's like, oh, we got to keep an eye on fucking Malone. Yeah. No, you it's don't. Fucking worst. I'm not going to do it. Yeah. But, It'd be great. <laughs> I'm not yeah. going to do it. It'd be great. Yeah. And I was telling my therapist, as I was like, I just need, I need, I would love like a little podium. Every once in a while, I could just go up to and gather all my friends and loved ones and be like, hey, you guys know I don't want to be here anymore, right? All right. Cool. As long as we know that, we can hang, we can have a good time, but just know, I don't want to be here, man. So why is it important to you that people know that? So they'll leave me alone. So they'll stop checking on me. So there's no more pity calls or I'm not that friend that you have to check on. I feel like it relieves some of that burden away from me. And it kind of sets the record straight to be like, hey, just so you guys know, I'm not going to do anything. But also, sucks. Hurts real bad. I don't want to be here. But like, let's just go about our day. You don't have to check on me. You don't have to fucking... It's Christmas. I got a call. I'm fine. Don't do that. Are you fine? No, I'm not okay, but I'm great. <laughs> Are you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's and that's the thing, because then it feels... <clears throat> it feels... feels like they I don't want people to feel like they have to do that and uh, yeah they don't have to do that so you think when people do that they're doing it because they feel obligated absolutely it's not they just care about you yeah, but do they care about me in a way that goes, oh, this fucking guy, I gotta, I gotta make sure I call him. Did anybody say, ah, oh, this fucking guy, or is that all in your head? Because, Maybe. Because you don't think you deserve to be cared about. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't think about that until just now, you fuck. Nobody's ever said, oh, this fucking guy, it's all in your head, man. Nobody said that. Nobody feels that. Yeah? You don't know. Right. Yeah, laugh through it, Chuckles. Ask around. Who do, Take a survey. Who do you want to call right now? We'll do it on the pod. Hmm. Who do you want to call? Pick nobody, a name. Nobody. I don't want to call anybody. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Hmm. You don't. You don't ever feel that way about me. You don't feel like I'm a burden. <sighs> I'm going to answer this seriously because this is a serious moment. Absolutely. Absolutely. No. <laughs> I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. Oh, God. No, I don't feel like you're a burden. 
You're pain in the ass sometimes. That is because you're you're fucking late and you only want to eat at two places. And no, I don't feel like you're a burden. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like of all people, I tell you. Yeah. You know. Human beings aren't, dude. We're not designed to go with this shit alone. But some of us. Some of us have some um, some programming, I think, that makes us feel like we're supposed to. Yeah. But yeah, we're not we're not supposed to be doing all this shit alone. No way. <laughs> but it's a hard um, it's a hard program to override, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I was just. Just crying in therapy, and yeah. I just kept repeating, "It just hurts." Yeah, it just hurts. Yeah, and uh, that, oh, that was the thing. She asked me. She's like, "Well, what do I need from? What would be the ideal situation for me with friends and people who love me and care about me when when I do need in those times of need?" And, and I honestly, I don't even know what that looks like. Yeah. I don't have an ideal situation. Yeah. It just hurts. Mm-hmm. Life's hard, man. Yeah. Yeah. So how was your therapy? <laughs> it's fucking fine. <laughs> what guess. if you were like, hey, great week? <laughs> a great week, dude. <sighs> um, it was fine. I mean, you know, we did like a little recap of Stuff I've noticed the past week, <clears throat> you know, I talked about how I'm much more aware of making jokes and mm. smiling when things aren't funny and laughing through things and all that. Um, <clears throat> then we started talking about, I forget how we got onto it, but started talking about negative self-talk and stuff like that. And, um, she asked me to list some good things about myself. Mm. All right. And I was like, oh, I'll, yeah, I'll fucking play along. Okay. Right. You just I can't take it seriously. <clears throat> and um, so she's like, so what are some, like, what are some good things about you? She's, and I was like, I know I have some. I was like, you know, funny, obviously. All right. Loyal, honest trustworthy, reliable. And she goes, I'm going to stop you real quick. So, okay. She said, I want you, she's like, great list. You, you're definitely like, this is what we're looking for. She's like, but I want you to say, I am in front of these things. <laughs> and of course I laugh and I go, okay. Yeah. And I start, I am funny. I am trustworthy. I am reliable. I am honest. I am loyal. And then I go, I go, I'm kind. I was like, I'm, I don't think I'm very, I don't think I'm nice necessarily, but I am kind. And then she, she stops. She goes, I have an observation for you. And I said, okay. And, uh, she pointed out that as I do, when I think I tend to look around mm -hmm. and she goes, you've been looking around the room the whole time, this list. And the only time you made eye contact with me, you, you looked at me and you said, I don't think I'm nice, but I think I'm kind. And she goes, why is it that the only time you could look me in the eyes was when you said something negative? Oh. Yeah. And I said, hang on, bitch. <laughs> what do you, I was, is that true? Did that really happen just now? And she goes, oh, yeah. And I'm like, Okay. And then <laughs> she goes, all right, I want you to say those things again, but I want you to look them in the eyes when you, when you do it. And I could not do it. Yeah. That's a weird one. Couldn't do it. Really? Yeah. I, I'm not exaggerating when she said, I want you to look in my eyes. And I said, oh, bitch. <laughs> and then we had like a real big laugh, <laughs> of course. Yeah. And she goes, do you not want to do it? And I was like, I can't do that. 
I was like, I physically, I can't look you in the eyes and say these things. Really? Yeah. Don't know why. And she goes, so you can look me in the eyes and say something negative, but not something positive. And I was like, evidently. She goes, why? And I go, you tell me. You tell me why. That's why I'm here. Yeah. Is it a belief thing? I don't fucking know. She wouldn't tell me. <laughs> <laughs> she wouldn't tell me. <laughs> she didn't give me the answer. <laughs> uh, mm. Yeah, so that was a fucking weird one. <laughs> then I'm like in my head, the session, like every couple minutes, I'll just like dip back and look at her and then we both start laughing and I'm like, God damn it. And uh, <clears throat> so she invited me to do another exercise. Hate it. Yeah. She goes, I'm going to invite you to do an exercise. I said, you can extend an invitation. I don't know if I'm going to accept it. But what do you, what, what, what's on your mind? You're so ballsy in these therapy sessions. What? <laughs> I would ne- I'd be like, all right, let's go. Like, let's do it. Like the idea of telling somebody, you can invite me. Yeah. I'll think about coming. Yeah. Let me see. What, I don't know. You want me to commit to this? I know what it is. Uh-uh. So Italian. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, you can stand the invitation. I don't know if I'm accepting it yet. What's on your mind? What's on your mind? <laughs> Let's talk about it. <laughs> I swear to God. like I, That's so odd to me. This is not a bit. I 100% said that to her. Uh, I was 10% joking when I said it, but absolutely, I need to know what the exercise is before I commit to this. And she goes, okay. So what we're going to do is... She's like, we're not, it's not like the last one. We're not putting anybody in a room, nothing like that, but we're just going to explore a little. She said, I'm going to guide you through some thoughts. And I said, okay. (laughs) She goes, okay. So close your eyes. I said, hang on one second. We need to have a conversation. She said, okay. And I go, I need to be clear about one thing. When my eyes are closed, your eyes are closed. (laughs) And she goes, are you being serious? And I go, oh, yeah. I was like, don't watch me do this. I was like, I, I have to know that you're not watching me do this. If my eyes are closed, your eyes are closed. And she goes, okay, I can commit to that. I said, all right. So I close my eyes. And I'm, I'm wearing a hat in this session. I was like, I'm going to pull my hat down. And she goes, I wouldn't know. I'm not looking at you. And I said, Nice. Good for her. I like her. Uh, nice. <laughs> nice. That's a good one. <laughs> oh, boy. So I'm sitting on this couch. <clears throat> Got my hat pulled down low. Mm-hmm. And because uh, we had talked before about like how I view my niece. How she's like this just joyful ball of love and I love her so much and how when I think of myself as a kid I don't see that Mm. so you know she's like I I want you to imagine yourself in a just a peaceful place just a nice somewhere you feel comfortable and relaxed and I mean you know me I go to the beach right I'm on Kia Beach in Kauai give you a very specific location One of the best spots in the world to watch a sunset, just so you guys know. Now, so I'm on the beach, in my head, alone. And she says, I want you to envision from the mountain, the hill, whatever's in the distance, you see somebody running over the hill. Okay. She goes, and then I want you to, you know, he's getting closer. And you see, it's you as a child. I'm like, <sighs> okay. Yeah. He goes, how does he look? I swear to God, this is what I said. I go, he's got big teeth and I don't know why. Oh my God, what are I, you doing? I'm, I, that's exactly what I saw. I saw this little kid. You know how little kids when they get their permanent teeth, they're like these big, they don't yeah. fit. That was the first thing that struck me. I was like, he's got big ass teeth for it. <laughs> Fluffy hair and big teeth. That's all it was. Uh-oh. And I tell her that, and she goes, Okay. She's like, Does he seem happy? And I was like, Actually, yeah, he does seem kind of happy. And then she's like, Okay, now he's up, he's standing next to you now. Okay. 
Dude, I fucking hate this. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, these fucking exercises on therapy. Now I got to do them on the podcast again. And uh, <clears throat> so she goes, um, <clears throat> what energy are you feeling from him? Like, what is he, what is he looking for right now? I, I feel like he's looking to me to know what to do next. Mm. Like he's looking at me for guidance. She goes, okay. So kneel down, sit down next to him. Just get on his level. Okay. <laughs> and she goes, I want you to ask him a question. Mm -hmm. Okay. What am I asking him? <laughs> what am I asking <laughs> little Louie? Oh, little Louie. Oh, you, you brushing those big ass teeth. <laughs> Why's your hair so? Is it gonna be fluffy forever? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so you got old Lou Bear, you got little Louie sitting together on the beach in Kauai, right? I need you to ask him a question. He goes, ask him. Are there any fears that he needs you to know about, or is there anything going on with him? That he thinks you should know about. She goes, you don't have to say it out loud. But just ask him. <clears throat> and before I can even get these questions out in my head, I start having a panic attack. Like, like fucking <clears throat> instantaneously. Wow. Yeah. And... I literally just opened my eyes. I go, I need to stop. I, like, I was like, stop, 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 stop done with it i'm done with it she goes are, are you okay i was like yeah i'm good i'm good i'm not okay but i'm great i'm good <laughs> exactly. i was like I, 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 none none of that she goes what happened and i go a lot of anxiety she goes what does it feel like and i go i feel like some sort of like electricity or wave just went from my feet all the way up to my chest and felt like I was, my heart was going to explode. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. I was like, my, I got, my arms are buzzing. My hands are going numb. I was like, I just, I need to stop right now. She goes, okay. She goes, first of all, thank you for telling me. And I go, I almost didn't. Cause in my head I was like, yeah, you got to ride this out, dude. Cause it, it felt like crying in front of somebody. Oh yeah. Being in this exercise and being like, I can't do it. But I was like, okay. I had so many thoughts so quickly. I was like, okay, are we going to ride this out or are you going to have a panic attack in front of this woman? Because those are the options. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, I I'm going to choose quitting. I'd rather quit than have a panic attack in front of her right now. Yeah. So, uh, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, snapped out of that. And she did, we did like, she was like, let's do like a calm down exercise. I was like, I don't need to. I'm good. She goes, humor me. And I go, okay. <laughs> I don't need to. I le legit was having a bit. I'm good. Yeah. I'm good. Yeah. So we did like the tell me five things you can see. Tell me four things you can, you know, all that shit. Mm -hmm. um, and she goes, so what that tells me is you have a protector. Some sort of protector is coming up. And she's like, and that's completely normal. She's like, it might have nothing to do with your childhood. It might have nothing to do with that question. It might just be, this was an uncomfortable moment and your body's saying, hold on a second. This isn't cool. Mm. And she's like, and that's normal. And she goes, I want you to close your eyes again. And I said, Matt, you first. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh. she goes, I just want you to let that protector know that it's okay, that you understand it was just doing its job. You're not mad at it. Didn't do anything wrong. Anxiety's normal. It's okay. And that you're going to get through whatever this is together. And I was like, okay. So I did that in my head. And then I opened my eyes. I looked at the clock. And I was, I was like five minutes left. And I was like, thank fucking God. And uh, yeah, that was it. That was my session. <laughs> Wow, has this happened before with this idea of 
a protector or like do you like on your own have you ever been thinking about something and 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 felt like this anxiety or this guarded uh yeah mostly related to grief mm. um because there were because death is such a weird thing yeah and there are so many things that um come to light afterwards and you learn more and then it's just it's such a clusterfuck sometimes yeah that's what i was thinking so maybe it is just like this because you had said something there about you had so many thoughts going just then Mm, yeah and so maybe it is just an overwhelming idea of like it's just like you know those (laughs) those old like 80s movies where somebody opens a closet door and then it's just like a bunch of shit falls out on them like it feels like that where you're like, oh, let me just ask myself, hey, you doing okay? <laughs> and you're like, fuck. Yeah. And you just close it. And that's just that guardian is just closing that door real quick and be like, hey, man, not a good time. We're still, yeah. we're still working some stuff out. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I And here, but like, most of my therapy before this therapist has all been, well, no, nah, because my previous therapist, we didn't do a ton of grief stuff we did some but before that was all grief right it was all dealing with that i've never done the childhood stuff yeah (laughs) so this is like brand new yeah and it is unfucking comfortable and i don't know why because i look at my childhood and i'm like yeah it's a normal childhood Mm mm-hmm She's like, you were raised by a single mom? I go, yeah. She goes, that's not normal. Like, okay. <laughs> she goes, then we talk about like schools I went, you know, and she's like, yeah, that's not a normal. Like when we were talking with Lori, mm-hmm. like everybody thinks of their childhood as like, it's a normal childhood. But, mm, no. Yeah. People, so I feel the same. I don't remember a lot of my childhood. But oh, if I you, got a thought for you on that. Go ahead. Yeah, but when you, if you were to just ask me off the cuff, like, hey, I'll be like, it was a great childhood. And like, didn't yeah. you find your dad dead at 12? Yeah, but I mean, other than that, it was yeah, a great Who doesn't? <laughs> yeah. That, doesn't everybody find their dad dead? I still dead? had pancakes, didn't I? <laughs> Guess who had extra bacon that day? <laughs> this not, kid. Not your dad. <laughs> Take it easy. Hey. 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 Yeah, I don't remember a lot of my childhood. Yeah, we talked about that a little bit. Yeah, I didn't like it. Uh, <laughs> Gonna be honest with you, because she was she was talking to me that uh, a lot of people have trouble remembering childhood stuff. My sister being one of them. Mm-hmm. My sister has no childhood memories, and she was saying that um, for people that struggle to remember their childhood, it's typically because you spend a, a large part of your childhood feeling unsafe in a way that you needed your caretaker to just give you comfort. Mm. Like for example, um, shot kids that are shy, just naturally shy. A lot of times people will come up and be like, Oh, she's really shy, huh? And the parents will go, yeah, you know, she's a little shy. And then the kid hears, Oh, I'm shy. And she knows it. My mom knows it but no one's comforting her about it. Whereas someone could come and go, Oh, she's really shy. And then your caretaker can go, no, she's not shy, but she, she definitely takes her time getting to trust people. And we're really proud of her for that. Mm. There's a difference between comforting. What fucking parent is doing that dog? Oh, you know what I mean? oh just the healthy ones. Uh, yeah. Is that a real thing out there? Pro- from our parents' generation? Probably not. That's what I mean. Like, who yeah. the fuck? I know. It was the eighties and nineties. Nobody's like, He's getting to, he's taking his time. We're proud of him. Nobody's fucking. But how great would it have been if someone came up to your mom and pointed something out about you and she answered it with, no, that's not what he is. He's this instead. And I really love him. He's great. Yeah. And you would have heard that from your mom. That would have been way better than her just agreeing with somebody, some observation from somebody who doesn't know you. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So if you have a lot of those moments, it's from your childhood where you, felt unsafe for whatever reason and you didn't get the proper comfort or protection from your caretaker, you can tend to kind of dissociate Mm. as a child because you're constantly surviving judgments and you you kind of feel like you 
have to do a certain thing. Yeah, you're just adapting to other people's exactly. opinions instead of exactly. actually trying to figure out who or what you are. Yeah, so you spend a lot of your childhood almost dissociating and then you <sighs> don't remember a lot of it later on. I think what's important here is that uh, I had a great childhood. Yep. And, uh, you know, now I'm all grown up and uh, mm -hmm. I'm not okay, but I'm great. Let's hang. Are you? <laughs>